So for exercises 9 through 18, refer to the graph of y equals sine x in the following figure. Okay. Specify the coordinates of the indicated points. So if this is y equals sine of x, notice that when, if this were a pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1. This is pi because sine of pi is 0. This would be 3 pi over 2 because sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Okay, so these are half pi increments going up. And then similarly, these are half pi increments going down. And so at negative pi over 2, sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. This point right here, this is sine of negative pi. And then this is negative 3 pi over 2 is this point. So they're in half pi increments going to the left as well. So this is negative 3 pi over 2. We can subtract 6 pi over 2 to get this point. This point would be negative 9 pi over 2. This here would be negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi. So this would be negative 7 because we're subtracting 2 pi. And this would be negative 6 pi over 2, which is negative 3 pi. So that A would be negative 4 pi. Sine of negative 4 pi is 0. B would be negative 3 pi. Sorry, I'm counting, and this is actually negative 5 pi. It's the same. We're still going to get uh, sine of negative 5 pi is 0. Any multiple of pi is uh, sine of any multiple of pi is 0. So sine of any multiple of pi will give you zero, so long as, as uh, k is an element of the z, so long as k is an integer. So a is negative 5 pi, b is negative 4 pi, c is going to be negative 7 pi over 2. Point D is at negative 3 pi. <clears throat> e is negative pi. So all of these values, well, not all of them, but any multiple of pi, sine of any multiple of pi is 0. So there's a 0 point. F is going to be positive pi. G, so... Any multiple of, of, so pi over 2 plus k pi will, so multiples of uh, k pi over 2. That doesn't work.
sine of pi over 2 is 1, sine of 5 pi over 2 is 1, because if I were to subtract 4 pi, I would get pi over 2. And 9 pi over 2 is also 1. Because if I were to subtract 8 pi over 2, I'd get back to the pi over 2. So for g, Now, h is going to be 3 pi over 2 plus 4 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. i is going to be a multiple of pi. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4 pi. And j is the high part. That's... Uh, 9 pi over 2. The sine of 9 pi over 2 is 1. Okay. State whether the function y equals sine of x is increasing or decreasing on the given interval. <laughs> so if you notice, we'll take the extremes. So sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. Sine of pi over 2 is positive 1. So x is increasing from negative 1 to positive 1. This one is increasing. Increasing on this given interval. So the definition for increasing So as you're going from A to B, this implies, so as, as, as you're going from A to B, as A is less than B, this implies that the function evaluated at, at A to function evaluated at B is also less than. Decreasing a function is the opposite way. Okay. So... These values are increasing from negative 1. They're increasing up to positive 1. So this is an increasing function on that interval. Sine here. So sine, we're looking at negative 5 pi over 2, which is positive pi over 2. Positive pi over 2 going to 0. This is quadrant 1. So sine is decreasing through quadrant 1. But also to look at this, this is... Uh, Negative 5 pi over 2, sine of negative 5 pi over 2 is negative 1, which is less, x, which is less than uh, negative 2 pi. It's the same thing as sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0. That's a positive 1. Uh, negative 5 pi over 2 is the same thing as pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. This is decreasing. We're going from a bigger number to a lower number. So decreasing functions is just the opposite way. You have A is bigger than B implies f of a is bigger than f of b. So for 23 to 32, it says refer to the graph of y equals cosine of x. Specify the coordinates of the indicated points. So in this one, this is the graph of y equals cosine of x. 
And notice here that uh, when x is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Okay, so that's how these values will go. This is the pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And cosine of 2 pi is 1. That's when you're, that's when this period repeats. Okay. And the same thing negatively. This is negative pi over 2. This is negative pi. This is negative 3 pi over 2. Okay. And so we have A. A is uh, 1. Point B is going to be a multiple of pi over 2. So it's going to be negative 5 pi over 2. Point C, uh, cosine of what angle is 1? Well, that would be multiples of, of uh, that's going to be pi plus 2k pi. I'm sorry, 0 plus 2k pi. 0 plus 2k pi. So we have negative 2 pi. D is negative pi over 2. E is positive pi over 2. F is at pi, so cosine of pi is negative 1. G is 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 2 pi is 1, so H is 2 pi. And I, so if this is 2 pi, there's 3 pi, there we have 4 pi. The cosine of 4, cosine of 4 pi is a positive 1. Okay. Number 33 through 36, state whether the function y equals cosine x is increasing or decreasing on the given interval. So this is the same thing as, we can subtract multiples of 2 pi. This is the same thing as 0 less than x, which is less than pi. So cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So we're going from positive 1 down to negative 1. This is decreasing. Okay, 5 pi over 2, of um, negative 5 pi over 2 up to 2 pi. Uh, we can add 2 pi to this. Uh, we can add multiples of 2 pi. So let's add eight pi over two. I'm adding four pi, I'm not changing anything. So if we're gonna add four pi on both sides, that turns this into this is the same thing as 3 pi over 2. So this is in quadrant 4 from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. 
and cosine of 2 pi is cosine of 2 pi is 1. So this goes from negative 1 to positive 1. This is increasing. Thank you very much. Please go to tutoring.